Hello, everyone, and welcome to this edition of the Foundation for Free Enterprise Education Speaker Series. My name is Scott Lee, and today I'm very excited to have with us Kylie Fuller of Range Resources Corporation located in Washington County. Kylie is a community relations representative for Range, and today she's going to be speaking with us about just exactly what community relations is, what a day in the life of a community relations manager looks like, and why community relations is more important than ever in this increasingly digital age. She's also gonna give us some important uh, tips about why internships are so important uh, as a component of your high school and college education. Kylie holds a Bachelor of Science in Business Marketing from California University of Pennsylvania, and she began her career at Range, ironically, as an intern from 2015 to 2017. She joined the community relations team at Range full-time in 2017. She lives in Washington, PA with her husband, Dylan, and their husky, Lacey. Welcome, Kylie. It's great to have you with us here today. Thanks, Scott. It's great to be here with you. Ah, I'm glad to have you. So look, this is very, very exciting. But when we first spoke, you talked about the importance of internships and shadowing and all that kind of thing. Um, tell us what it is. How did it help you? How did you get one? And why are they important for our viewers? Absolutely. So when I was in college, we have a career center at California University. And I just walked in there one day and put my name on a list to receive emails about open internships in my area. So one evening I was checking my email and I saw the email from Range. Um, they had an open internship for a public relations intern and I was really excited because I had heard of the gas industry, but I wasn't super familiar with it. I knew it was kind of in my backyard here in Washington and Claysville area. So I applied for the internship. I ended up getting it. I was really excited because um, I was able to still stay at home in college while working during this internship. Um, so what I always tell students is it's so important to try to get an internship. At Cal U, it was actually required of me, but I know colleges don't always require it, but I tell everybody require it for yourself. Um, this is a great way to actually do hands-on activities with the team and see if you even like it. You know, I could have started at range and decided I really didn't want to work in communications or the natural gas industry. I ended up loving it and now I'm still here, but the way that an internship can, can work is you either love it and you realize you want to move forward with it, or you can not really like it and you decide you want to go into a different direction. And that's okay. You know, it's better to learn before you get too deep into your career. Um, and then, you know, end up having a job that you don't love to go to every day. So that's the advice I give you for that. That's fantastic advice, actually. And, and you know, tell us a little bit about now when you were living there and growing up there, you kind of knew what range was or anything. But what was your first impression of range? And did you even think you had an opportunity to career there before this internship? I actually both of my brothers worked in the gas industry as soon as they graduated high school. Um, so I had known about it. I've seen the trucks, I've seen the rigs, but you know, part of me was just kind of looking at them like that is something that I'll see every day, but I don't really know anything about it. Um, and a perception that people have is that you have to be an engineer to work at range or any company in the natural gas industry. And that is not the case at all. Um, I mean, I have a business degree. We have accountants, we have people who just have high school diplomas, and then we have people with master's degrees. So it's really cool that there are so many jobs in the natural gas industry that you wouldn't even really think about um, unless you do some digging into our website or other operators' websites and just kind of see what they have to offer you. Fantastic. So let's talk a little bit about, you know, exactly what community relations is. And for people considering maybe a career in this field, what should they study? What skills do you need to have? What skills are critical to your success? What kind of personality should you have to thrive in this field? It's a little bit different. You know, it's not just your marketing degree. It's not just a business degree. Yeah, we want to talk, really drill into what community relations is and what you do. Sure. So community relations at range is a department that supports our operations group. And it's exactly what it says. It's a community. So what we do at range and, and I'm going to talk more about range, but this is for other companies too, and other operators. Um, what we want to do is make the community where we live and work a better place. So range gives to over 200 or 350 nonprofit organizations a year, 
Um, we want to support them and make them uh, be able to thrive in Washington County specifically. Um, and, you know, we want to work with them and see what they need in the, in the county and in the community and what people actually need from us. So I would say in community relations, the, my personal opinion, the top two most important things would be people and writing skills. Um, I've always loved to talk. I can talk to pretty much anybody. So this was a little bit easier for me to learn. Um, if you don't have, you know, overly abundant people skills, you can always work on that. Um, it just takes practice. I just, you know, my parents always said I never stopped talking from the day I could start talking. So it's kind of fun for me because I get to use one of the skills that I'm good at. Um, writing skills, I, I, you know, I could do the basic, but I've taken that over this opportunity at range to learn. Um, you know, I'm always working on my writing skills every single day because a lot of our, what we do is writing and talking. Um, in community relations, you will see us at um, career fairs, at festivals, at, a, you know, the, a county fair like the Washington County Agricultural Fair, um, or we'll take people on a well site tour. So we're always talking to the public and just seeing what we can teach them and, you know, and learn from them um, so we can be best seen in the places that we're operating. That's great. So basically, if I heard you correctly, you are a liaison, you are a bridge between your company range and the community. And, you know, basically you're building this, you know, whole community network of people, not only that you support with, you know, your, your, your money, but also you, you get involved with, uh, you know, events and getting people in the community involved with range and vice versa, range involved in a lot of volunteer opportunities in the community. And you as the community relations person tells that story and coordinates that. Am I, am I hitting basically the. Yes. So what we, what we say is we want somebody to be able to walk right up to us and ask us a question about range or about where we are operating or what, who we're supporting. Um, we want to be a friendly face in the community. We have a, 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 a PR team that is, we're everywhere. You've probably seen our signs and our, our booth and we play games. We have games for kids and adults. So we just want to make sure that we're just not an email address um, or a website and we're actually real people and we will talk to you. We will answer the phone and, and get you an answer if you have a specific question for us. We wanna make it easy for people to, um, to, to actually figure out who we are as a company and what we're doing in the community. Perfect. Perfect. So give us a little bit, uh, a little bit more about your job. What's the best part of your job? What's the worst part of your job? The best part of my job, I would say is I get to do a bunch of different things all at once. I like multitasking. I like working on a bunch of different projects. We're never working on one thing at a time. Um, I think that's fun. Some people might not. <laughs> I, I just, I like to challenge myself and during this, um, these kind of weird times, you know, things have slowed down a little bit for us. Events have been canceled as you all may know. Um, but we're still always trying to figure out a way to be working on a bunch of different things. Um, so that's what I like. I like to be creative and figure out, you know, new things for us to do and new ideas. Um, so I don't really have the a worst part of my job. I would say um, if I had to pick anything, I it would be paperwork. But I know that that comes with the job. That comes with most jobs. Um, I don't like clutter, so I, I don't like paperwork. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, you know, I know it comes with my job, so I just make it work. <laughs> Great. So the energy industry is constantly under scrutiny and even more so as we head into the fall and into the November elections. And I'm not getting political, but in this age of instant reaction, can you talk about the importance of being careful in your communications and perhaps give us an example of something maybe that went very, very well and maybe something in your communications that backfired and how did you deal with the you know community backlash as a community relations person? Yeah, so, um, you know, we've all seen somebody react too quick um, to a situation and that's what we've been taught at range is to take a step back, take a breath, figure out the problem or question or concern and, and just make sure you have an answer before you react. 
Um, that's and that can go for your personal life too, um, not just for a company. Um, you know, things have happened and and people make mistakes all the time. But to figure out how to respond to it is to never react too quickly. Um, you know, get the facts straight, and then you just respond in a in a reasonable manner. And if you don't have the answer, you just simply let them know. You know, I don't have the answer, but I will get it to you, and I will make sure it's right before I send you, um, or I tell you the the right answer. Great. What's been your greatest success uh, story there since in your tenure? I. Um, me personally? Yeah, no, what are you most proud of in your job? What, you yeah, know, what, what do you that's take a pride fun in? one, okay. Um, I actually, from being an intern, um, you know, you start out kind of, uh, you don't know as much as everybody else, you're still learning from everybody. And a few years ago, our department took over our charity golf outing and clay shoot. Um, we've raised since 2008, over a million and a half dollars for nonprofit organizations. So that's, a big those are big shoes to fit in and i actually took i started to take the lead on this golf outing and clay shoot about three years ago um and the the first year that i kind of took the lead on it was our record year of proceeds that we collected and that just gave me so much confidence um i was working with people who have been in the industry like for 10 years or 15 years so when you're coming in as, as a newbie, you know, you're a little nervous to take charge and to tell people, you know, this is my idea and I think, really think we should run with this. But I, my team was really supportive of me and that was great for me because it built, it built my confidence up that I could say, well, I really think that this is a great idea. And the first year I ran the golf outing and clay shoot, it was our record year. So that's something that I'm very proud of. And I've been working on the clay shoot and golf outing since. So I guess I did a good job. <laughs> that's fantastic. I mean, golf and guns, what could go wrong? I mean, yeah. that's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so look, you know, I think people would have a mis misconception about maybe community relations and think all you do is sit at your phone all day and send out tweets. How much of your job is like social media? How much your job is, is actually events and personal interactions? writing in other words what what does your typical day look like and you know after you answer that where do you see the community relations field going in five to ten years sure so we have um some social media platforms we have facebook twitter and linkedin um we we do post a lot of what we're working on in the community and actually our operations um but i would say most of my job is interpersonal um uh, interactions at, at community events. You know, we're at, on, in a typical summer, um, not this summer, but in a typical summer, we're busy just about every single weekend um, at a community event or just, you know, a few hours here and there. So I would say most of it is just talking to people, um, whether you're just talking about their kids or their dogs, or if they have a specific question about, you know, their lease. So, a lot of times at these events, we take some people from different departments and we'll have somebody from our land department or somebody from our environmental department because sometimes people ask me questions that I don't have this, the right answer for. So we'll take a team with us to these events and they have a better, um, a better grasp on where we are. It's funny, our land department has such good relationships with people that, you know, Joe the farmer can walk up and he knows the landman by his first name and they know each other and they know about everything about them. So it's really cool that we have these interactions with people. So I would say, you know, if I had to throw out a number, 85% is personal um, and the rest of it is social media and our website. But I would say the best way that we get our, our, our facts out and, you know, just get some information out to people is personally talking to them. I know right now it's a little bit different. We've moved to having a little bit more of a virtual platform right now, um, but we haven't stopped, you know. We have been sponsoring some virtual 5Ks. We um, have, we had a virtual science fair for our local schools. We actually had a really, really nice um, virtual well site tour a few weeks ago with some local school teachers. Um, and that's something that would take, you know, six, seven hours, and it took about two and a half hours 
because wow. we were using our phones and recording it from our phones and it was actually really cool. And I think that that's something that we're going to keep up after, you know, after we're allowed to start having more um, in-person events, but we just are having a really fun time figuring out new ways to get in touch with the community and, and, and everybody around us. <laughs> That's great. You struck on two very important things. The first one was you said in a typical summer, we're busy almost every weekend. So it doesn't sound to me as though your job is Monday through Friday, nine to five. No. How many hours would you typically put in in the summertime? I mean, in a, in a week. I have worked, there was a few weekends I mean, we're working 15, 20 hours over time. Um, and a lot of times um, we can compensate for our time on the weekends or an evening. You know, I maybe, I might take a Friday afternoon off because I have to work Saturday afternoon. But a lot of times we're so busy that it's not worth taking time off because your work piles up anyway. Um, I mean, the Washington County Fair is Sunday through Saturday, we're there every evening for at least four hours. We go to the auction Friday and Saturday, we're there for hours on hours. So it's a lot of fun, I love it, but it's a lot of work. Um, yeah. We're not nine to five, <laughs> we never, community relations I don't think ever is nine to five. Um, even now we've done a couple virtual events and we have one coming up that's I think at 6.30 p.m on a Wednesday night. So, and that's just because that's when people can attend it. So we just kind of have to be flexible and, and just make ourselves be able to, to work around these schedules. Well, that's the perfect segue because the second thing I was going to say that, that was very important is this notion of flexibility in this, you know, COVID-19 pandemic year, you've actually created some alternate ways to reach out to the community, but you found that it's been very successful. And so you're going to continue it in the future. So, you know, I think some of us tend to look at these kinds of situations as a negative, but it's actually turning into a very positive from a community relations standpoint. You can reach a broader base of people in less time and more efficiently. Mm -hmm. So that's great. So what advice, uh, Kylie, would you give to someone who is interested in exploring careers, either with range or specifically with community relations departments or, you know, communications? What, what are employers looking for? how can they prepare to enter a career into this field? Absolutely. Um, so I actually talked to our HR team about this question. Um, I wanted to make sure I got a professional opinion or facts, <laughs> and then I would give my opinion on it. Um, so I'd say to work in the community, community relations that range or any other employer, um, you need to have ex excellent communication skills, whether it's in person or online. Um, things are different now, so we're all just trying to figure out a way to manage this. Um, strong writing skills, which I've already talked about, you know, you have to love what you do. Um, and that's kind of goes back, goes back to the internship process is you either love it or you decide that you don't like it anymore. And that's okay. Um, but we want somebody to, to love what their job is, um, because you actually will want to work on your work. Um, the, I would say the ab ability to manage sensitive or controversial issues. Um, you know, you can't just slam your computer down and walk away and yell at somebody. You have to figure out a way to resolve the conflict in a professional manner and, you know, get straight to the point, but, you know, be polite about it. Um, and somebody who's going to represent the company well, um, I think Range is a wonderful company and I will always believe I, you have to believe that before you tell somebody else that. So I have always made sure I paid attention to the values of the company and the, read the handbook and just kind of kept myself up to date with company values. Um, and I would say the ability to learn new skills, um, just as I said about writing skills, I could do the basics, but I've learned from my team and other, and other people in the company I've, I've kind of picked up of how they work on things and how they write. So it's been really good for me. Um, I would say another thing is for me personally, and um, I think a lot of people would agree with me is keep your social media clean. Um, you wouldn't believe how many employees check social media for candidates that have sent in applications. Um, either lock it down or keep it clean or delete it. 
um, because they're going to check it and you don't, you don't want to not have the chance because of your social media. Um, you could be the smartest person in the world and have a bad, a bad Facebook page and you won't get the job. Um, and I would say, you know, just ask questions during your interview and make sure that you do research on the company. Um, I'd hate to go into an interview with range and have no clue what they do because you're automatically off the table. Um, so do <laughs> research before you even get the first call. <laughs> Fantastic advice. In fact, uh, when I listened to that whole last segment, for our viewers that are watching this right now, you might want to go back and, you know, drag your bar back about five minutes and listen to that because that was gold. So thank you for that. Well, I can't believe how fast this time is going, but I do have one final question for you uh, as we wrap things up here. So you've covered a lot of ground and I'm so grateful for that. But it's said now, Kylie, that the average person coming out of high school will have 15 to 20 jobs in their lifetime. Um, dinosaurs like me had three to four, but this is the new norm. So what, you know, what can you say, what's the best piece of career advice you've received early on in your young career and how do you plan on using that advice as you go forward. Absolutely. So the best I, advice I've ever received um, is to be flexible. And I can put that into my personal life too, not just my professional career. Um, I've always struggled with being a perfectionist. There's been times I've made a mistake and I've lost sleep over it. And my team, they make fun of me because I will, I'll make a mistake and I'll say, oh my goodness, I'm not gonna sleep about this over this tonight. And they're just kind of like, you need to let things roll off your back. You need to be more flexible about it because everybody makes mistakes. Um, I'm still learning that everything doesn't work out. And, um, and I think that that's something that I'm going to have to continue to work on is that's just, you know, that's in everyday life and that's okay that things don't work out. We've all learned this summer. Our plans are not always what we expect. So I think that I'm always going to have to make sure I'm taking a step back thinking about it and realizing that this is not going to matter in a couple of years or even next week. Um, you know, everybody makes any kind of mistake that it's not actually going to live with you forever unless you let it. So and then <laughs> a piece of, of advice that I would give to a young person is um, just working on your confidence. I have also struggled with some confidence issues, you know, starting out as an intern, you don't have as much confidence. You know, I was just coming out of of college, well, I was actually still in college. I had worked at Buffalo Wild Wings. I was just serving food and drinks. And, you know, I all of a sudden was pushed into this office setting with professionals who I was like used to serving them drinks at Buffalo Wild Wings. So <laughs> I was like, I kind of got thrown into this and I had to teach myself, you know, you can do this. Like you have great ideas and you didn't get this internship or job for no reason. Um, you know, a lot of times I would question myself if I had an idea, I wouldn't say it. Um, and that was after I started working on the clay shoot and golf outing for us that I decided that I have good ideas and if people don't want to use them, then that's fine. But a lot of ideas people had never thought about it. It's really cool when you're a young person going into a career that, you know, you might think you know, you don't have a good idea, but it could be something that nobody ever thought of. You know, it could be something with social media, um, you know, students and, and me, me too. I grew up a little bit more with social media than people who are older than me. So you might have a really cool idea for social media and you don't want to say it because you're too nervous to say it, but it could be a wonderful idea that is really successful. So don't be afraid to say your ideas because People can work from them and, you know, create it, create something really cool that, you know, could have never happened if you didn't say anything about it. <laughs> that is the perfect way to wrap up this segment. Uh, Kylie, I can't thank you enough for being with us here today. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're interested in reaching out to Kylie, her contact information will appear at the end of this video. But what a great tour into the world of community relations, into the world of internships and the importance thereof. You've covered a lot of ground here today. We're so grateful that you took the time with us. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thanks, Scott. I'm really glad you had me. Thank you. All right. Very well. Be well.